let me be honest with you. Modern day PC gaming kinda sucks. Now, don't get me wrong, our PCs are more powerful than ever, graphics are stunning, and the possibilities seem endless. But is something missing? Are we trading true innovation for a never-ending cycle of hardware upgrades, half-baked ports, and endless microtransactions? Today, we're diving deep into this topic as it has been on my mind lately. And I bet it's crossed yours too. See, I've spent countless hours building this beast of a gaming rig, and it's an incredible machine, but deep down I can't help but wonder if I've lost touch with the soul of gaming itself. Ah, uh, the golden days of PC gaming, a time when games were crafted with care and ran seamlessly on our trusty machines. No endless patches or day one updates, just pure, unadulterated gameplay. Every title was a complete masterpiece, not a rush job. Ports were like fine wine, perfectly aged for our systems. And the joy of exploring digital worlds was untainted by the frustration of constant crashes or stutters. Those were the days when every gaming session was a nostalgic adventure we still treasure today. However, years passed, and so did the golden era of PC gaming. As a long-time PC gamer, it's disheartening to witness the decline in gaming quality. Broken games, day one patches that rarely fix issues, and empty promises have become all too common. Our hopes are raised only to be dashed by unplayable experiences filled with FPS drops and loading textures that break immersion. PC ports, once our pride, now often feel like afterthoughts. It's not just disappointment, it's a plea for a return to the days when a game's release was an event to be celebrated, not dreaded. So what went wrong? And trust me, it's not always the developer's fault. Modern day PC gaming presents a daunting challenge due to the sheer diversity of hardware configurations. With a hundred different PC setups to account for, each varying in CPU, GPU, RAM and storage, it's a logistical nightmare. Consider the OS compatibility and version, driver updates and BIOS settings. The variables are staggering. The struggle to optimize games for this myriad of systems often results in disappointing experiences. As a PC gamer, one can't help but long for the days when games were crafted to run seamlessly across a broad spectrum of configurations. So the issue is more dynamic than what we can imagine. Even in the gaming industry's crown jewel, last year's game of the year, Elden Ring, PC issues persisted. Frame rate stuttering, dropping to the dreaded zero FPS in extreme cases, shatter immersion. DirectX 12 shader compilation problems left players grappling with gameplays while cryptic network status check failed messages left players disconnected from the online experience. And to top it off, anti-cheat systems sometimes even prevented the game from launching. As PC gamers, we deserve smoother and more reliable experiences with our beloved titles. Another case study is the recent plethora of PC ports. For instance, The Last of Us 1 Remake PC port's debut on Steam was nothing short of chaotic, with mostly negative reviews dominating the platform. Players were infuriated by the game's tendency to crash every 20 minutes, rendering any immersive experience nearly impossible. Shader compilation was another ordeal, taking what felt like an eternity. Even on high-end GPUs, random frame rate drops plagued gameplay, leaving RTX 4090 owners baffled, who couldn't escape the nightmare of random frame drops. In the Steam store, shockingly, out of over 9,000 reviews, a staggering 67% reflected the widespread dissatisfaction. Characters bizarrely turned soaking wet in cutscenes, needlessly devouring VRAM resources. Naughty Dog's belated response, while appreciated, left many questioning why such issues plagued a high-profile release. The absence of pre-launch codes for review sites and journalists hinted at a rushed release, undoubtedly aiming to capitalize on HBO's critically acclaimed Last of Us TV show. Many suspect that a problematic version of the Oodle decompression library was at the root of these performance and shader building problems. The frustration peaked when players realized that waiting for shaders to compile consumed half of the two-hour Steam refund window, a situation far from ideal. This ordeal serves as a stark reminder that even celebrated titles can fall victim to subpar PC ports, prompting gamers to question the rush to embrace the so-called remake era. Okay, so now that we've covered a Sony exclusive that was ported to the PC, well, 
What about a game that is an Xbox exclusive? And yes, we are talking about the so-called game of the generation, Starfield. If you've been trying to run Starfield and scratching your head over its demanding specs, Todd Howard's got a simple answer. Upgrade your PC. Starfield, in all its cosmic glory, has proven to be one of the most resource-hungry titles to grace PC gaming in recent memory. Even the almighty RTX 1490, coupled with AMD's Ryzen 7800X 3D, can barely muster an average of 60 fps at 4k with all the settings maxed out what's interesting is amd's exclusive partnership with starfield and with bethesda and amd engineers collaborating intensely the game's optimization leans heavily towards amd's gpus and cpus leaving intel and nvidia users feeling somewhat left in the cosmic dust not only do average frame rates struggle on nvidia hardware but frame times the crucial measure of smooth gameplay also suffer noticeable spikes as digital found noted, this AMD dominance in Starfield isn't something you see every day normally in gaming titles. It raises questions about the extent of access Nvidia and Intel had during the development process, especially considering AMD's significant financial investment in the PC partnership with Bethesda. From the disappointing PC performance of Sony's The Last of Us 1 remake and Xbox's Starfield, let's consider another title that isn't exclusive but is definitely not fit for a PC release. Star Wars Jedi Survivor the name that has left a sour taste in the mouths of PC gamers in 2023. We're talking about what might just be the worst PC port of the year. And boy, it's been a roller coaster of disappointments. The shader pre-compilation process? Sure, it's there, but it's like putting a band-aid on a broken lightsaber. Stuttering at launch? Expect it. No matter how many times you fire up the game and the frame rates, oh, it drops faster than the Death Star into a black hole every time you step into a new location. Even those lucky enough to wield the RTX 4090 reported dismal frame rates when the game launched. Now here's the kicker. Jedi Survivor is waving the AMD flag, which is cool and all, but it's like bringing a blaster to a lightsaber duel. It supports AMD's FSR, but what about DLSS and XCSS? Nope, not invited to the party. And even if you try to make FSR work with NVIDIA or Intel GPUs, it's about as effective as trying to force chalk a droid. Mouse controls? Forget about it. Changing the display resolution of the keyboard and mouse? Nope, that's not happening either. The image quality? It looks like it went through a sandstorm. Thanks to the TAA and FSR2 implementations, after months of patches, NVIDIA DLSS finally decided to show up. But the dark side of the issues still lingers. And while DLSS finally got a seat at the table, Intel XESS didn't even get an invite. So even with the almighty RTX 4090, hitting a steady 60 FPS minimum is about as elusive as catching a speeding pod racer. As Digital Foundry boldly proclaims, Jedi Survivor shouldn't be sold. And as gamers, we can't tell but nod in agreement. Let's be real here. PC gaming, as we've seen, can be a roller coaster of frustration thanks to the endless combinations of hardware configurations out there. GPUs, CPUs, RAM, storage, OS, driver updates, and those sneaky background software like Razer Synapse or Corsair IQ. It's just crazy. Now, consoles? They're a different story entirely. Developers have the keys to the kingdom. Understanding the Xbox and PlayStation architectures like the back of their hands, there's no pesky driver dots, no proprietary installations to wrestle with. You simply pop in that disc or hit the download button, and within minutes, you're immersed in your gaming adventure. And let's not forget the beauty of standardization. With consoles, you're on a level playing field. No need to fret over specs or whether your rig can handle it. It's the same experience for everyone. In the world of PC ports, there's more than meets the eye. Besides the technical hurdles, there's a dark side to the journey. Think tight deadlines that are like ticking time bombs, forcing developers into the relentless crunch culture, where working over 50 to 60 hours a week becomes the norm. Nights and weekends swallowed by the gaping abyss. Why, you ask? Well, blame the unpredictable nature of game development and the unforgiving release dates set by both fans and companies. In this world, workers don't expect riches or loyalty. It's their passion that fuels them through the chaos. But here's the plot twist. It's all about the treasure. Pirates lurk in the shadows, silently stealing the fruits of developers' hard work. The damage from privacy isn't small. It can sink even the mightiest ships. For small game developers, the stakes are higher. They need stable funding and strong sales to keep their dreams afloat. 
piracy? It's like a cannonball to their ambitions. A threat that can drown startups and indie studios. So in the grand quest for success, remember the road to a triumphant PC port is filled with more than just technical obstacles. So now that we've dived into the depths of why modern day PC gaming can sometimes feel like a bumpy ride, what are your thoughts on this? Feel free to share your thoughts and let me know if there is a modern day solution to this modern day madness. If you want to know the 10 reasons why Rockstar Games is hated these days, check out the video on the left. And to watch the rise and fall of SimCity, click the one on the right. And make sure to like the video, subscribe for more explainers, and see you next time. Till then, adios.